People are like, oh, why are you playing the race card? But what if I give you the numbers? If that's what you're talking about, the algorithm is like, sis, what are you talking about? Like, gender also plays into this. And most of the viewers are also becoming content creators themselves. Get tired of these unending lists every year. At the end of the day, Jeremy Fragrance is the one bringing in the most money for YouTube. Jeremy Fragrance wants to be making Valentine content in December. If you're trying to be different, then it's almost like you're the problem. You want the brands, you know, reaching out to you for sponsorships. These numbers matter. The views matter. The number of subscribers matter. You can respectfully disagree with me in the comment section because if you come for me i'm gonna come for you as well my people my people welcome back to my channel i make videos to help you smell good look good and feel good it's miss prissy baby subscribe i'm angry if you're not already subscribed to the channel go ahead and smash that subscribe button and become part of the family we're starting off on a good note why don't you go ahead and click that like button watch the video to the end if you do not like it you're welcome to take your like button back today's video is one of my favorite type of videos to do on the channel it's going to be a chit chat video and um hmm okay it's one that i'm a bit nervous to talk about but i got to do it anyway I have to do it anyways because it's been on my mind it's fragrance youtube a game and how do we become better at playing this whole fragrance youtube game if it's something you can relate to by all means you're welcome to drop your thoughts and comments in the comment section i always like to hear from you guys because like i always say i don't know it all i'm only going to be speaking from my perspective of the whole topic if you're interested to hear what i have to say about the whole fragrance content game without further ado let's get right into the video I've been doing fragrance YouTube and dishing out fragrance content for close to a year now. It's about 10 months, I think. I'm coming to a year in, I think, March. That's when I posted my first video in 2021. A year ago, I was coming into it with fresh eyes. There are a couple of things I've observed. There are a couple of things I'm still yet to understand. I'm just going to be speaking from where I am and how I feel. Underlying this whole YouTube thing is a lot of passion for loads of people. Let me just start off like that. A lot of people do fragrance content and put out fragrance videos because of passion because we love fragrances we all love what we popularly call scented water loads of people have started their fragrance collection even long before youtube existed some people have grown their fragrance collection over lockdown some people had a large fragrance collection you know during lockdown some people have learned to create that collection i think everybody is on different fragrance journeys what underlies a lot of it is passion that aside inadvertently we all have to at some point admit that whether it's a passion whether it's a hobby at some point you do want to be appreciated for the work you do i have come on the channel in the past and i have said that fragrance content fragrance youtube is a hobby for loads of people and whilst that is true we cannot all deny the fact that the numbers matter especially in this day and age where when you want to get monetized or you want the brands you know reaching out to you for sponsorships these numbers matter the views matter the number of subscribers matter the number of views you're having on your shorts on your videos on your reels on instagram as much as we want to tell ourselves let's not focus on the numbers these numbers are important to the brands that were eventually trying to still get to see us and to acknowledge us everybody has an end plan for themselves for some people it's to get monetized for some people it's to become brand ambassadors for some people they want to own their own fragrance brands at the end of this thing it really does depend what the end game is for you talking about this whole fragrance game there are a couple of things that i have observed and i'm going to be highlighting continue number one there are already some authorities in this whole fragrance game that would be the same in any other industry or any other sector it's almost like the first to market becomes the first or the authority in that topic so for example within fragrance youtube we're talking about people like jeremy fragrance we're talking about people like demi rollins these people have almost become the figure of authority when it comes to fragrance content it's almost as though they determine the algorithm if jeremy fragrance is talking about something because he has amassed so much views on that thing it's almost like if that's not what you're talking about the algorithm is like sis what are you talking about so if jeremy fragrance wants to be making valentine content in december and <laughs> i'm here trying to do um uh, uh, i don't even know i'm here trying to do christmas fragrances the algorithm is going to be looking at me like sis what are you talking about you need to be talking about what jeremy fragrance is talking about because the algorithm cares about what jeremy fragrance has to say at the end of the day jeremy fragrance is the one bringing in the most money for youtube i don't need to use him as a case study but again this is almost like a compliment to him as well 
saying that he's almost like an authority in this industry or in this, in this YouTube niche of fragrances. I feel like the algorithm is checking for the people who are bringing in the most bulk. First to market or first to speak about something almost becomes the authority in that topic. I move on. Another thing that I have also come to notice is that if you're not doing like this lists and when I mean lists I mean the most popular topics like the most affordable fragrance, sexiest fragrances, most complimented fragrances, if you're not doing perfume hauls or perfume declutters then like those are the most popular topics, those are the topics that people are almost checking for, always searching for, those are the topics or the, the videos that tend to do really well within this niche and sometimes you want to do other things, you want to be a bit more creative, you want to create other formats of lists or you get tired of these unending lists every year. But that is what the niche wants, that's what the people want and you gotta give the people what the people want, you know, for your videos to do well and for the algorithm to notice you and for then for your channel to grow and then you know all of those longer term goals and aspirations that you have for your channel. Within this fragrance YouTube content creation world, there are just certain lists and certain topics that bang and if you're not jumping on those topics then it's like you're the outsider. I don't know if you get what I mean. You guys should go ahead and let me know because this is a chat. It's a chat. I know I'm the only one talking in this video, but go ahead and let me know how you're finding it on your channel. Do you feel as though there are certain topics that when you speak on, you tend to do better than when you speak on other topics? How do you feel about constantly talking about the topics that are favored by the algorithm? Another point I have observed having done fragrance YouTube for a while now is the amount of flankers that the brands keep pushing out and it's almost as though it's very difficult to find something novel or something new i feel like there's something that perfumers are telling themselves that you know if, it, if it's not broke don't fix it i don't necessarily feel like i've really put my nose on things that are groundbreaking or new i won't say i'm the most you know explorative person when it comes to niche fragrances but even with the designer fragrances most of the new releases or the flankers are not very much different it's just i have said it before on the channel it's people just saying intense a la rose a la this a la that and they give it to us and say oh that's a new fragrance something new is coming out but there's nothing new apart from the Allah that you've just added in front or the intense that you've just added in front. The other day I was talking about the new release from Lancome, La Nuit Tresor. There wasn't much difference. The only difference was there was an additional cherry note and whilst that was nice, I mean I could have also gotten a cherry fragrance and layered it with La Nuit Tresor Alla Fully and voila, I would have had La Nuit Tresor Intense. Personally, don't feel like there are loads of new things coming out and at the same time if you don't talk about these flankers because that's what is new then the algorithm is not looking out for you it's like if you swim against the current then you are the problem <laughs> it's not these things that are the problem you need to actually jump on the trends or jump on what is successful or jump on what the algorithm is pushing for your videos to do really well next thing i have observed and this one like i <laughs> I kind of talked about it but I didn't come out straight to say it but you know what I'm done trying to be overly politically correct because these things happen but people don't speak on it enough I personally feel like there's some element of race, race. and I'm coming to the next point hold on and gender that plays into this whole fragrance YouTube content. If you're from a minority, then, meaning like if you're like me, my color or my race, then I don't necessarily feel as though the algorithm is watching out for us as much as it's watching out for our contemporaries of a different racial background. And that's on period. It is what it is. The numbers are there to back it up. Because with things like this, when people say, oh, race has something to do with how successful or unsuccessful an influencer is, people are like, oh, why are you playing the race card? But what if I give you the numbers? What if I sit down and actually show you somebody who has been on YouTube for the same amount, a black woman or a black man who has been on YouTube for the same amount of time as somebody from 
you know another background or a caucasian person and we start to compare the numbers i'm not going to go into all those facts and figures today all you need to do is do a youtube search for yourself and see when we talk about the authorities in fragrance youtube content creation i can't mention on my one pile names that are as big as the names i have mentioned from my racial background Bruh. i can't think of anyone and this is not me even putting down anybody but if you can maybe you should educate me there's also gender as well i personally feel like the female youtube reviewers and i don't know i don't even know many male youtube uh, fragrance reviewers but i feel like the women tend to do better our channels tend to do better than our male contemporaries as well i was listening to justin copeland talk about this and i totally agreed with him he kind of opened my eyes to this as well fantastic youtuber by the way check him out justin copeland maybe i'm a bit biased or maybe male content creators are not talking about the sort of fragrances that i will be interested in i don't know but i know that gender also plays a major role and race also plays a major role in almost how well a fragrance youtube channel does and like i said if you totally disagree you can respectfully disagree with me in the comment section because if you come for me i'm gonna come for you as well <coughs> i move on another thing i've observed is if your content is not selling in the sense that if you're not pushing for to sell 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 i don't personally feel like the brands come for people who don't sell 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 at the end of the day businesses are trying to make money and they're going to go for the people who are going to help them make that money that means they're basically going to go for people who are going to help them sell their products it takes a whole lot of work when you're not the sort of person who is selling 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 to almost get the brands to jump on you you have to make yourself that brand for the brands to then want to associate with you which is a lot of hard work another thing i have noticed as well is I mean the niche, the fragrance YouTube or fragrance content YouTube niche is a very small one. Every year increasingly most of the viewers are also becoming content creators themselves. When you imagine it or when you think of it as a pie, whilst the pie is big enough to go around everyone, the, the share of the pie is reducing because more content consumers are also becoming content creators moving on another thing i have observed or i have talked about as well on the channel is that fragrance youtube is very expensive i mean it is very expensive everyone is at different financial levels i almost also feel like sometimes the casual viewer would rather the watch somebody who has got more perfumes than somebody who's got less perfumes and it's also about how you make your perfumes look because you might have four perfumes and there's a way you arrange your four perfumes and somebody that has 50 perfumes will still look like they have less perfumes than you i'm just using random numbers when people have more fragrances in their backgrounds or you just know they have more fragrances i feel like people are more compelled to listen to such people that's just how we are as human beings i think if you went to a store to shop you would most likely go to a store that was stocked up with items and go to a shop where you know the aisles were empty or the shopping whatever i don't know what to call them that same logic applies people tend to watch people who have got more fragrances than people who have got less fragrances to show it's very difficult because you might have a passion for fragrances but you might not have so many fragrances to talk about and already it almost feels like the odds are against you because you don't have that many fragrances to talk about or or it almost looks like you don't have enough knowledge about what you're talking about just because you don't have that many fragrances you all get what i mean if you don't get it forget about it right. the difficult question is how can we as fragrance content creators stay loving and doing what we do without running into problems getting upset with the algorithm getting frustrated it's a tricky question but i'll try my best number one i think it's about balance and whilst there are loads of hot topics to jump on to get the views it's very important that you stay also talking about the things that you're passionate about remember when i started the video i said we all do these videos or talk about fragrances at the end of the day because there's an underlying passion my mathematics or the way i do things is i say i'll give two videos to the algorithm and one for my Myself. so this sort of video i'm doing right now are the top type of videos i love to do I love i have a few talking points but i'm just going to talk from my mind so because i have um is moving and also and find it i'm moving oh, as content creators to stay in a 
and inadvertently inadvertently uh. we all have to this day and age where um it's like if you're riding against the waves in in summary what i'm trying in summary